I've got to make it to the control panel. Hey, hey! Self-destruct canceled. When Microsoft first invented Windows, and we're talking really old, early versions, they began to run into a problem. When you start building all this GUI, this graphical user interface into a system, you end up having to do a lot of adjustments, a lot of configurations. And with early versions of Windows, it was kind of a hassle because you were literally all over the place to adjust this or adjust that. So a few versions ago, Microsoft came up with the concept of something it calls the control panel. The control panel is nothing more than a handy centralized source for most of the configuration that you have to do on your system. Now the control panel that we're looking at with Windows XP versus the control panels that we see up through Windows 7 are fairly different. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at first at a Windows XP control panel and then we're going to compare that against a Windows 7 control panel. So let's start off with the granddaddy, Windows XP. All right, so to get to Control Panel in Windows XP, just click on Start, and it's right there up front, Control Panel. Now, there are two views with the Control Panel. By default, with Windows XP, particularly if you have uh, XP Home versions, you're going to get this category view. The, the A-plus exams pretty much assume, for the most part, that you're going to go into what they call the classic view. Now, if you take a look in here, there's all kinds of different stuff. Let's just click on a couple real quick. For example, here is, these are my network connections. Uh, another one is configuring the keyboard. Uh, another one is setting up user accounts. But the important thing is, is that most of the time, if you want to do anything in the Windows world for configuration, you're going to be doing it here. Now, I want to go ahead and close out of the control panel here and let's fire up Windows 7. Now in Windows 7 to get to control panel you pretty much the same way you just click on your start button and locate control panel. Now you'll notice that this one's a little bit bigger. First of all you have different views here too. Both Vista and 7 also share this category view which we don't use. Computer nerds like us we are going to use either large or small icons. I'm going to use small icons because it just puts a little bit more space out there. So if you take a look, you should see some stuff we've seen before. There are differences in terms of exactly what's in here, and different episodes are going to go into this in a lot more detail. But for right now, I just want you guys to understand there is a control panel, and it's a place we go to to do stuff. So you'll see all of these things in here. So for example, let me click on this keyboard. Now here's my keyboard settings. That's no big deal, but that particular tool is actually a file, and I want to show you that file. There it is, right here. Do you see these CPL files? These are actually some of the icons you see over here. So for example, I can click on Joy, and this is actually a game controller control panel applet. Or we can click on Firewall. And this is actually the firewall. And if you actually look up here, it'll say under control panel that this is a control panel applet. Now, CPL files are only part of the game here. The other thing we can do, and this works from XP to Vista and Windows 7, is something called MMCs. Let me show you how this works. If we take a look at a certain tool, for example, if you look really closely, I'm going to change this to large icons so you can see it better. If you take a look at administrative tools and you fire this up, you're going to notice that the screen looks a lot different. It's almost like a Windows Explorer where you can see our left hand information. And then if you look inside here, you'll see all of these guys, and I'm going to make these a little bit bigger too, all have this little shortcut on there. These are shortcuts to something, but these are not what you'd think. These are not CPL files. These are MMCs. So let me show you how this works. I'm going to fire up MMC manually. So you can actually come into your start menu right here and just type in MMC.
And what you're looking at now is a raw MMC panel. So what we can do is we just select what they call snap-ins. So here are all of these different snap-ins. These are not, one more time folks, these are not control panel applets. These are MMC snap-ins. So I'm gonna pick a task scheduler. Give him a moment to do his thing. Now I can actually choose it for this computer or I could do it for another computer if I have the right permissions. And I don't have to stop. I can pick a number of different tools like this and load them in. Of course, part of the battle is knowing what all these guys are, but that's what most of this entire series is about, is talking about these fellows. So I've got three different snap-ins loaded in. I hit OK, and now what I've done is I've actually created connections to three very different control panel applets. MMCs are powerful tools because the MMCs that are built into the control panel are great and you're going to be seeing lots of them. But as you become more comfortable as a tech, you discover that you find certain tools you use more than others. And as a result, instead of simply using the MMCs that are provided by control panel, you can literally make your own custom MMC like the one we're doing here and save it and you can put it on your desktop, whatever you want, and then that way you can access certain utilities the way you like to. So let's go ahead and finish this up. We're going to save it and dump it to the desktop. So I've decided that I like this particular one. So I'm going to do a save as, and I'm going to put it on my desktop, and it'll save it with the extension MSC, and I'm going to call it uh, Mike's, because I'm very possessive of my stuff. So I save it now, and now I have Mike's closing up all my control panels. And now anytime I want to, from here on in, I can fire up my own little personal control panel in such a way with the utilities that I'm most interested in. So remember the secret to control panel. Control panel is probably going to be your first go-to type place for almost anything you need to do in terms of Windows configuration. Control Panel's been around for a long time, and it's certainly in every version of Windows that's covered on the A-plus exams. Keep in mind that everything within the Control Panel is either a CPL file, which is stored under System32 folder, or it's an MMC. You can use the default MMCs, but if you're a cool kid, you'll make your own.